All right, guys, we're going to talk a little bit tonight about the chemistry of buffer problems. So what is a buffer, or technically a buffered solution, is one that resists a change in pH. So if you add an acid or add a base to it, the pH doesn't change, or at least doesn't change very much. Um, it's almost inevitably going to change, but it won't change a lot. Um, typically, to get a buffered solution, we need one of two things. We need a weak acid and its salt but well, we need a weak base and it's salt. And so like, what are examples of this? So really any weak acid would do. We know that hydrofluoric acid is a weak acid. And so if we added hydrofluoric acid to say sodium fluoride, okay, that's a weak acid and salt. That's gonna be a buffered solution, um, particularly if the concentrations are close to each other. We'll get a little bit more into that. Um, weak base, um, all kinds of them out there, but the one that you're likely to see a lot um, is ammonia and then its salt would be um, um, something like ammonium chloride. That's NH4Cl um, for those of you that can't read my writing. Okay, so weak base in its salt, weak acid in its salt, that's how we get to buffers. Now, how do we actually solve bus buffer problems? If it's just a straight up like a pH of a buffer problem, it's real easy. We just do the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Okay, uh, pH is the pKa plus the log of the concentration of the base over the concentration of the acid. So remember, anytime you see P, that P just means negative log. And so that just means the negative log of the Ka. So the Ka value is given to me here. Um, in fact, a little bit hard to see since I covered it up with some writing. Um, 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So we'd take the negative log of that. Um, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. Negative log of that is going to give me 4.74. Okay, nice and easy. And then the only question is, what's the base, what's the acid, and what are their concentrations? Well, plainly, that's the acid, right? That's acetic acid. So that's the acid concentration. Um, the acetate ion, C2H3O2 minus, that is the conjugate base, right? That's what acetic acid becomes once it loses its hydrogen, okay? Acid turns into conjugate base. So that is the base concentration. So that means plus the log of the base concentration, which is 5, over the acid concentration, which is also 5. By the way, that comes out to be the log of 1, which is 0, right? Which means that the pH is just the pKa, okay? Um, by the way, that also lets you know that the concentration here, if they're equal, doesn't really matter. If we change this a little bit, um, and we said, what's the pH of a buffer with the uh, same two things, but a different concentration? Same sort of deal, right? Henderson Hasselbalch, pKa, okay, Ka value is the same because it's still acetic acid, right? Plus the log of the base over the acid, base, acid, okay, 0.05 over 0.05. Right? Those are still one, right? Log of one. Log of one is still zero. And so all that really matters then is the pKa. And so we're going to get 4.74 again, even though we pretty drastically changed the concentration. Okay? As long as the concentrations are equal, then it doesn't really matter. Um, the pH is always going to be the same. It's all reliant on the Ka value. Okay, so that part's pretty easy. Now, obviously, if the concentrations aren't the same, then you've got to plug them into Henderson Hasselbalch and see what they are. Okay, so like if this was 0 0.040, then this isn't going to cancel out. It's going to change a little bit. But if they are the same, then it doesn't matter if it's a really big concentration like, whoops, a really big concentration like 5, or if it's a really small concentration like 0 0.05 or 0 0.0005, it really won't matter. Okay, so... That's the easy part, just plugging straight in. What gets hard, of course, is when you've got a buffer and then you add something to it, okay? So what's important first off is to remember what the actual equations are, okay? You've got the weak acid, that's the generic form, right? HA and it's conjugate A minus, okay? If we went, if again, if we went back to the previous equation, HA conjugate is A minus, okay? Um, or we can have the weak base B and it's conjugate BH plus, and if, again, just as an example of that, if you think, okay, NH3 and its conjugate would be NH4 plus, okay? So, 
what happens in these situations? Okay, well, there's basically two things that can happen. If you add H+, plus, it's always going to react with the weak base. Okay, so we add H plus in, and if we add H plus to this situation, it's going to react with the A minus, okay, the conjugate base, and that's going to give us HA. Now, what happens if we have the weak base situation? Okay, well, remember, H plus always reacts with the weak base. Weak base. So in this case, H plus plus the base, or I'll just go ahead and use the NH3 that we have here. Okay, and what's that going to give me? That's going to give me the conjugate. In this case, the conjugate acid, because we had a weak base and it's conjugate acid. Okay, so you always got to remember that because we're going to be using that in a second to do the stoichiometry part of these. Now, what happens when you add a base um, or hydroxide to a buffer solution? Well, it's always going to react with a weak acid. So in that case, you've got OH minus added in, right? Plus, okay, what's it going to react with this time? It's going to react with the acid, okay? We're talking about the acid side here, okay? And what is that going to give me? Well, that H is going to come off and react with this. That's going to give us water, which react, it really we don't care about, right? I mean, that's just water. We don't have to worry about its concentration, plus A minus, okay? What happens over here on the base side? Okay, if we add OH, okay, remember, different reaction. We're talking about acid and base side. Let me split those up just to make sure you know what's going on. So if we add OH here, again, it's going to react with the weak acid. The weak acid in this side is NH4 plus, okay, or BH plus, whatever. I mean, it's the generic. And again, that's going to give me water plus the base. Okay, those generic equations are really important for when we're going to do the stoichiometry part here in just a second. Okay, so let's do that. What happens when you add an acid or a base to the buffer? Now, we just talked about equation-wise what happened. We're actually going to work a problem. There's two parts to doing each one of these problems. There's a stoichiometry part, okay, and then there is the equilibrium part or the Henderson-Hasselbalch part, okay? You got to do the stoichiometry part right to be able to get the Henderson Hasselbeck part right. Okay, you can't just plug stuff into Henderson Hasselbeck. You got to see what goes on. So let's look at this situation and see what we've got going on here. We're adding solid NaOH. Okay, so basically what that means is that I'm adding OH minus, right? Again, sodium doesn't really matter a whole lot. Why? Because it's always a spectator, okay? It's not really playing a part in the reaction. Same thing here, okay? So in that case, what's my acid? Okay, acetic acid. This is the base, okay, or the conjugate, conjugate base. And so what is going to go on? Remember we said when you add OH, it's going to react with the acid. Okay, so let's look back here. OH, sorry, this is the acid side. OH plus the acid gives us water, which we don't really need, and the conjugate. Okay, so let's write that equation out then. For our particular one that we're working on right here, I've got OH minus, okay, plus acetic acid, okay, yields, okay, remember that's going to be, it's going to yield water, okay, and, and if you feel like being a completist, you can write that. Again, doesn't really matter, we're not going to worry about moles of water or anything like that, okay, um, plus the conjugate, C2 H3O2 minus, okay? Now, again, water isn't what really matters, but we've got everything else that we need here. So, now, now we're worried about the moles, okay? It's stoichiometry. Remember, stoichiometry all about moles. So, instead of concentrations, I need moles. Now, luckily, since I'm in a one liter solution, that means that these are the moles that I start with, right? Okay, so that means I start with 0. Oh, ho, ho, pen. I start with 0. 0.5 moles of acetic acid. I also start with 0. 0.5 moles of acetate, right? Okay. And I'm adding in 0. 0.01 moles of hydroxide. Okay. 
Now, technically, this would be a limiting reactant type of thing, but in general, okay, unless you're doing a full-fledged titration, which we'll probably talk about in another video, um, I'm going to run out of this first, right? And you can tell that it's a one-to-one -one ratio, so which thing am I going to run out of? I've got less of this. I'm going to run out of it. So on this side of the equation, minus 0.01 moles, minus 0.01 moles. On this side of the equation, what are we doing? Yeah, we're adding to it, right? Oops, I forgot the minus there. Okay, 0.01 moles. Okay, and so now we sum everything up. Okay, this is the stoichiometry part again. Zero, right? Hydroxide's consumed. That's the point. Buffer's supposed to eat up the acid or the base that comes in there. Get rid of it. Okay, and that leaves me over here with 0.49 moles of my acid. And on the opposite side, I've got 0.51 moles of the conjugate base. Now, these are going to be important. I'm going to need these values to do the second part. Okay, so I've done the stoichiometry part. Okay, so now to do the actual math, you come over here and you do the equilibrium part. Now, you could plug in an ice table and work everything out. Okay, and if you want to do that, nothing wrong with that. But complicated, right? I mean, not really complicated, but just time consuming sometimes. And if we can plug stuff into Henderson Hasselbeck, then let's do that. Okay. So the question is then, do I know the concentration of the base and the concentration of the acid? Darn you keyboard. Nobody likes you. Um, yeah, we know, whoa, we know those concentrations, right? Because we're in a one liter solution, and if I have 0.49 moles divided by one liter, that means that this concentration of my acid is 0.49, right? The same thing is true over here. Now, if it's not one liter, then you've got to actually, you know, divide that out and do the math. But most of, a lot of the times on the AP test, they will make it that because they, they don't want to make that math part that hard. Okay. So acid concentration 0.49, base concentration 0.51. So now we come over here and plug all of this goodness in. Log of 0.51 over 0.49. Right? Everybody with me so far? And then the Ka value, again, we're talking about acetic acid, so we've already done this pKa like a bunch of times. Okay, negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, we've done that several times. Go back if you're not real sure where that came from. We did that in this very video. Okay? And so then we're just going to plug this stuff in. Okay? So in other words, we haven't changed anything really all that terribly drastically here. Okay, so let me make sure that we think we've got everything okay here. Um, and actually, I don't know that I've worked this one out yet, so let me grab the calculator. Let's see what the log of 0.51, okay, 0.51 divided by 0.49. We're going to take the log of that. Now, it's just above 1, okay, but that's good because if it was 1, it would be 0, right? So that means it's going to change a little bit, okay? So that means it's 4.74 plus 0 0.01737. Okay, so we add that together. Sorry, I didn't have that added up ahead of time, guys. And we get an answer of basically 4.76 is my new pH. Now, what does that show? pH did change, yes. Okay, didn't change by much. Okay, it went up which makes sense because I added a base. Adding a base is going to cause your pH to go up a little. If I added an acid, it should have gone down a little. Okay? And it did change, but it didn't change a lot. Okay? So that's basically exactly what we were looking for there. Okay? That's the basics of it. I'm going to run through um, one problem with a base just to make sure um, that you get the general gist and, and know how to set everything up. So in this case, um, buffer solution. Okay, again, same deal. Um, in this case, it's a base, okay, so my formula then is NH3, right, okay, and what's that going to give me? That is going to give me NH4+, plus, right, so this is, this is my essential equation in this case, or I could have switched it around and we could have NH4 plus on the other side, okay, really doesn't matter that much, all that really matters is acid, base, right? 
Okay, and so Henderson Hasselbeck. Now, I've got to get this KB into a KA. Remember that we do that by basically taking your KB value, okay, and dividing it into, sorry for the sloppiness here, guys. Try not to make this video 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. Okay, that's going to give us 5.56 times 10 to the negative tenth. Okay, that's my Ka. Oh my gosh, I mean, I know I said I was going to have it a little sloppy, but negative 10. Okay, so that's my Ka value. So we're just going to plug that into Henderson Hasselbeck. pH equals pKa. Okay, plus the log of, again, base over acid. So my base concentration, 0.25. My acid concentration, 0.4. Okay, how do I know that? Conjugate acid, conjugate base, acid concentration, base concentration. Okay, then we're going to plug all that in. And I'm sure I had that written down somewhere, but we'll just plug it in real quick. So negative log of the Ka which is 5.56 e negative 10 okay so that's 9.25 plus the log of 0.25 divided by 0.4 boom and we get 9.05 okay so that's our normal you know sort of everyday pH on that and then, what would happen if we added in some acid? Okay, gaseous HCl, I'm going to add one mole of it. It's a one liter solution, which again makes the math a little bit easier. Okay, so again, let's hop back here just real quick and say, okay, hold on, I'm adding in an acid to a base. Okay, so what happens? This is my equation. There should have been a four there. I don't know why that wasn't there. Um, so this is my general equation. So we're going to jump back over here. And we're going to say, okay, so I'm adding in H+. Plus. That always reacts with the base, which in this case is ammonia. It's going to give me ammonium. Now, yes, there's water and all that stuff in there, but it really doesn't play any role in our equation here. Okay. And so we got to do the stoichiometry part first. I've got 0.1 of my hydrochloric acid, right? One mole, or 0.1 mole. Since it's a one liter solution, my concentrations are moles. Okay, so real, real quick, let me go back and put moles here, just to make sure we know what we're talking about here. Um, over here on my conjugate acid side, also moles. Again, it is molarity, but since it's a one liter solution, those are the moles. I'm going to run out of this first, okay? So minus 0.1, minus 0.1, plus 0.1, okay? So that gives me uh, 0.15 moles of NH3 and 0.50 moles of NH4 plus, okay? Reading everything straight down. Since we're in one liter solution, turn those into molarity, okay? So what does that become? It becomes 0.15 molar, 0.50 molar, okay? And now we can just plug into Henderson Hasselbeck. Again, you could hit yourself, and you could plug into an ice table, but why? I know this because I've already worked this out on the previous slide, okay? How did I get that? Oh, that thing is going to drive me bonkers, okay? Remember... Found the Ka value this way, 5.56 times 10 negative 10. Negative log of that is 9.25. That's what we already found in the previous problem. So you could plug that in again. I mean, it wouldn't hurt anything, but I'm lazy. I would prefer not to. So log of base, 0.15 over acid, 0.50. Okay. Now, we're adding an acid, right? pH should go down, right? And if my pH of the buffer itself was... 9.05, pH should be down a little bit from that. So let's plug it in real quick. Um, 9.25, that's the pKa, plus the log of 0.15 divided by 0.50, and we get 
a pH of 8.7. Okay? So definitely we'll work a bunch of these in class, um, but that should hopefully help you out a little bit with the process of being able to do the buffers. Thanks, guys.